Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. It was finally time to put my money where my mouth is. For over a year now, I have been covering Hasbro's new edition of HeroQuest from the point that they launched it on their crowdfunding platform. But I don't back crowdfunding campaigns. I did say that if it ever went to retail, I would buy a copy. And here is my retail copy. At the moment, I have only bought the core set. I am probably going to pick up Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord. I will definitely be picking up other expansions that they are doing. I do have a pre-order in for the Guardian Knight expansion, and I will pick up Frozen Horror, which I know is something that is coming down the line. But of course, I have spent a long time on my channel restoring a classic 1990 edition of Hero Quest, and I even recently published a playthrough of that game on my channel. That is the game that I had as a child, that is the game that I love dearly, that is not this game. And considering how much I love the original and how important the original is to me, this edition is never really going to stand up to that. And I'm not expecting it to, I wouldn't ask it to, I think it's an impossible task. But I am excited to have it in my collection for a number of reasons. I think first and foremost, it's just a milestone in gaming, the return of a classic after over 30 years. But also, this edition is based on the American rules set. I am in the UK, and I have only ever played HeroQuest using the European rules set, which is significantly different. Finally, I'm just excited to have another big box of cool miniatures and dungeon terrain. You can never have too much dungeon terrain, especially if you are a Dungeons & Dragons player like I am. And there is a lot of cool plastic terrain in this box. So in this video, I am going to quickly dive inside the box and look at all the different components, and I am doing that through the lens of somebody who loves the original so much. And while everybody knows I'm going to prefer pretty much everything from the original Hero Quest, I will try to give some unbiased opinions on what I think of everything else that's in this box. Just before that, I will point out, this game doesn't come shrink-wrapped, it does come with the little sticky tabs holding the lid on. As you saw at the start of this video, I used a hairdryer on those sticky tabs. The heat from the hairdryer melts the glue and you can gently peel those stickers off without causing any damage to the box. Unfortunately, my box has damage anyway because Royal Mail took a hammer to this one. This one got a bit bashed up in the post and I do have a crumpled corner. Something for me to have a little go at fixing when I get the time. For now, let's get on with this. Inside the box you get two plastic trays with card surrounds. This is my top tray and as you can see there is a little bit of crumple damage which is carried over from the outer box. Fortunately nothing else is damaged at all. And if we slide this cover off we can see that this is the top layer which has all of our furniture, our cards and our hero sheets. And this all looks lovely, and immediately, as soon as I remove that card outer, I can see little homages to the original. I can see where Hasbro have taken the design aesthetics of the original. They have modernized it, but there are little callbacks, even down to really small details like on this bookcase. I can see there is a skull there on the top shelf. And if we compare that to our original Hero Quest bookshelf, check that out. It is incredibly similar, even down to how the books are stacked. The fact there are some extra scrolls in here. Of course, in the original Hero Quest, you get two different designs of bookcase because they're just on printed card. In this one, they have used the same mold for both bookcases. I think that's acceptable. Making molds is expensive. The cupboard also has a very similar design, although the doors are a little more squat. You will notice, of course, as well, there are rats on the top of my cupboard here, which are held in place with pegs because there are holes in the top of the cupboards. There are no holes in the top of these cupboards and bookcases, but you do get skulls and rats in the set. I guess they were thinking the intention was you could just balance them on there or maybe glue them on. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure why they didn't do pegs. Before we go any further, it is worth noting these plastic trays do hold everything really, really tightly. And that's a problem, particularly for the miniatures where you might be putting a lot of stress on thin components and even more so if you are intending to paint everything. If you are trying to get the stuff out of these trays, it's generally better to get up underneath the tray and push from the bottom. That will cause less strain on everything but you can try and push the nubs in on all of the different spaces so that everything is held in loosely rather than being held really, really tightly. It's a bit fiddly. Um, this plastic insert is quite thin, but you can do it. For example, if we look at this treasure chest compartment here, 
uh, the easiest way to get that treasure chest out is to push from underneath and remove it like that. And we can see there is a nub here and a nub here. If we just try and push that in on both sides, And then when the treasure chest is put back in like that, we should be able to just remove it very easily next time. And of course, when you have that card outer sleeve over the top, everything is gonna be held in place by that card sleeve anyway. Generally, I think they've done a really good job in recreating the feel of Hero Quest whilst making some changes. And these parts are really sturdy. That's a really nice chunk of plastic there. As much as I am a fan of the original Hero Quest components, these plastic terrain elements are lovely. These are really, really nice. But as I mentioned before, while they are upgrades, they do have lovely callbacks to these original components. The weapon rack is very, very similar in design. I think the Alchemist bench is particularly nice. It's really, really chunky. And it now has integrated scales rather than having them as a separate element. You can see though, there are still so many little nods to the original, the paper, the open drawer, the bottles, the ink well. I definitely prefer the design of the original tomb, but the new one does have the added benefit of a removable lid. You can hide something in there if you want to. I have to say, I also much prefer the original rack, the much more elegant design. This is a little bit too chunky and boxy for my liking. The new tables are really nice. They remind me a little bit of the Mantic ones from the Mantic Dungeon Terrain Grates. But the throne has had a very nice upgrade. And we cannot forget our Sorcerer's Table. I now have a Sorcerer's Table that doesn't have broken candlesticks. They are integrated into that particular mold. They're not separate elements. And then we have the doors. While I always appreciated the original cardboard ones from Hero Quest, this is an obvious improvement, a nice plastic set of doors. So that's it for the dungeon elements, and it is really nice to see so many little touches in those designs that are lifted from the original Hero Quest. For a big fan like myself, it's really nice to see those little details. And obviously that element has carried across to the design of the cards as well. I'm obviously not going to go through every card in the deck in this video, but I just wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of this treasure card. This was something that came up during the campaign, something which I mentioned quite a bit. All of the artwork does lovingly recreate and modernize the originals. And while I will always prefer the original artwork because that's the style of art I prefer and that's the style of artwork I grew up playing with, it is really nice that they managed to recreate as much as possible those art elements while updating them for a modern game. Some of my favorite art elements from the original were the backs of the spells and they have done a really nice job of updating those. Water in particular I think is a really lovely piece of artwork. And it's also worth noting for European viewers, the old cards are smaller than the new ones. And it's quite fun for me to see the difference between my original character sheets and the character sheets in this new Hasbro edition. The new character sheets are much more in line with the ones that were in the American edition of the game. The original character sheets that I have were upgraded when the Dungeon Adventure kit came out. They redesigned them to allow for a lot more information to be put on them. In the beginning, this was all we had. Mind, body and tasks completed. Our second tray contains the miniatures, and as I mentioned before, this tray does hold those miniatures incredibly tightly. You will want to try and loosen up those inserts, I think. And immediately, I can see that quite a few of my miniatures are bent out of shape. They've probably been in the box a long time. It's put them in a bad mood. But that is incredibly easy to resolve with the hot water treatment. If you've never done that, all you do is you get some hot water, you dunk your miniature in the hot water, it will soften up the plastic, you can repose it, dunk it in cold water, and it will hold that original shape. Very easy to do, just don't run them under boiling water and scold yourself. We will look very quickly at these miniatures. I'm going to blitz through these because I should imagine most people who are interested in this game have already seen unboxings and have seen all this stuff in detail. But there are a few things I want to point out. First of all, we have our dwarf hero. During the campaign, Hasbro sent me a pre-painted version of this dwarf. And we can see that the final product is pretty similar to what they sent me. The only difference is the promo dwarf is actually a lot more rubbery than the finished product. And if we compare him to our original HeroQuest Dwarf, we can see he is much bigger. 
The Barbarian is an instantly recognisable classic miniature from Games Workshop, and I think they've managed to capture some of that character in the new version. Obviously he's a little bit more cartoony, he has much bigger feet, but I like this one. The new wizard I think lacks some of the character of the original, but it is quite clearly done in the same sort of a style. Mine is a little bit warped, he is in need of a hot bath. And then we have our elf. I do much prefer the original version of the elf. The new one is fine. It is worth noting that they did gender swap this elf. So this is a female elf, the only female character of the four heroes in the base game. You get eight orcs in four different sculpts. Two sculpts are male, two are female. For the fairness of comparison purposes, I have picked my favorite orc from the new edition to compare against my favorite orc from the original. And it is not even a close contest. The original Hero Quest orcs are classics. They are so much better than these new ones. It is nice to have different designs for the orcs, but I am always going to prefer those original ones. You get six goblins in three designs. I think one of the designs is female and two are male. This is my favorite of the three. And again, compared to those original goblins, I just don't think they compare. Obviously, these are the miniatures that I grew up with and I love them the most. And I'm always going to pick those, really. I think a lot of people will prefer the newer designs, but not me. Next up, we have the zombies. I actually really like this zombie sculpt, but these are my favorite zombies of all time so again these do pale in comparison but i have said in other videos that i don't find many zombie miniatures that i actually really like and i do like these ones and now we are comparing one of my favorite mummy sculpts of all time against the new edition so again it's not a favorable comparison but these aren't bad they have a slightly goofy walk like an egyptian pose going on which is a bit too comical for my liking but they're nicely detailed and then we have the skeletons. It's nice to see the skeletons a bit more armoured up in the new edition, but these originals have that certain Ray Harryhausen quality that I love so much. We have our new evil sorcerer, and I'm sorry, but you're just not going to compare to Skeletor. You just can't do it. This is a quite nice miniature, though. Then we have our Chaos Warriors, or I should say Chaos Warriors and Dread Warriors, and look how much bigger the new Dread Warriors are. They're not as nice to me, I love this classic pose, but these are really nice miniatures, just the same. And I know much has been said about the fact that Games Workshop do not have a hand in this new edition of Hero Quest, and the term Chaos Warrior is one of the things that Hasbro didn't have access to for this new edition. But even then, they did manage to have a cheeky little reference to the original Hero Quest by naming these Dread Warriors. Because I have here my original Hero Quest quest book from my 1990 edition. And if we go to the very back page, we can see where it talks about Chaos Warriors, it actually refers to them as Dread Warriors that strike fear into all but the bravest of opponents. And of course, the absence of Games Workshop meant the absence of femurs as well in this new edition. Although, to be honest, if Games Workshop were involved in Hero Quest today, I don't think they'd include femurs anyway. I think they would swap them out for something else. But Hasbro have used abominations, these creatures from the Black Lagoon, and I think they are awful. I just really don't like them. They are suitably big and suitably uh, imposing and scary, I guess, but I just don't like them. And maybe that is the ingrained bias of my love for the femurs, but ugh, I, just, I just don't like these at all. These are my least favorite element of this new edition. And finally, we have our Gargoyle, which is a really nice sculpt. I like it a lot. Of course, it goes without saying, I don't like it as much as the Bloodthirster, but also this new model is quite wimpy in comparison to the original Gargoyle. Although they're roughly the same size here, you have to bear in mind that all of the characters in the original Hero Quest are much smaller than the new ones, so this Gargoyle seemed much larger and more imposing. And the final thing in this trade to compare is the dice, and really there's no comparison at all. These new Hasbro dice are so much better than the originals. These are plastic, these are wooden, these are a little bit chunkier, a little bit weightier, these are a little bit flyaway, a little bit lightweight. These have really rounded corners, these have much sharper corners which makes for nicer rolling, and the iconography is just better as well. Here we have the comparison of the original skulls, the original heroic shields, 
and the original Evil Shields. I just think the new dice are so much nicer. I will probably use these new dice when I am playing my original copy of Hero Quest as well. Something else which is just better in the new version is the game board itself. It's so much bigger, the squares have been upsized for the larger miniatures, and yet despite that they have kept the look of the board almost the same. The colours are the same, the position of all the little details, the bones and stones is the same. The only thing they have really done is they have added more texture to the flagstones, more cracks and breaks in the floor. So it's really nice to open this board and just be teleported back to the original Hero Quest. This is the old dungeon that you remember. It's just bigger, as you can see when I place the original board over the top. An all round great way to treat the board. You upscale it, you make it bigger, you give the board more room to breathe, but you keep all of that art the same. We're almost done because the last thing in the box is this small pack of cardboard components and tokens, including Morkart slash Zargon screen to hide behind. The screen is actually a bit smaller than the original and it is fun to see on the back all of the monster charts and the rule summaries because I am used to my UK edition of the game, where the reverse of Morkar's screen just has a key for reading the maps. But as with so much else in this box, we do have a reference back to our original design of the screen. We have Mentor there, reading from Lore Tome, whilst looking out at all of Morkar's villains. And yes, that is Mentor, that is not Morkar or Zargon on the cover there. There's a single token sheet because Hero Quest is actually surprisingly light on tokens and other components really. It's just miniatures and dice for the most part. The card is pretty thin, surprisingly thin I would say. I would have expected it to be a little bit thicker than that. But it is nice that these tokens are double sided. That's not something that we had in the European edition of the game. There's actually a curved stairwell here and then a straight one on the reverse. And also on the back of the rock piles and things we have walls again that's something that wasn't in the european version of the game we just had rock piles there's also some gates here which is something else that wasn't in my original copy and then finally you get your rule book and your quest book obviously we're not going to look in the quest book because it's big old spoilers but i am really looking forward to trying out the american rule set which i've never played with and that is that. Sorry if I've gone on a little bit in this video, but there was a lot to get through. And I did really want to compare all of the components against the ones that I'm used to using and also the ones that I have spent the last year lovingly restoring. I guess the big question at this point is, am I happy with my purchase? I got my copy of Hero Quest for $84.99 postage free from Magic Madhouse, which is a really good price and a price that a lot of people aren't going to be able to get because the price has been squeezed by Asmodee now. But for that price, I do think I got good value here. There's a lot of good miniatures. There are a lot of really nice terrain elements. I'm going to be able to use all of that stuff in other game systems. And of course, it will all end up being ported into quests for Dungeons and Dragons. And on top of that, I've got a completely new way to play Hero Quest. Plus, I have an oversized game board and new dice that I can use with my original copy of Hero Quest just to give everything a bit more space to breathe and to have some nicer dice to roll. This version of Hero Quest is never going to replace the original for me. It just can't. It has no way of doing it because my love of Hero Quest is so entrenched in my childhood in that Christmas from 1989. And then on top of that, I spent such a long time restoring a copy on the channel, it gave me a whole additional level of respect and admiration and love for the product. So really, it's never going to be that game for me. But overall, I think this is a lovely product and it does feel a little bit like a love letter. Yes, they have updated the artwork, they have updated the designs of the miniatures, they have excised all elements of Games Workshop's Warhammer setting. That's fine and that's to be expected. But there are still so many little nods to the original, so many little references. They have played this, I think, perfectly. It is a hit in the nostalgia for people who played the original. It does have enough of those elements to say, hey, this is the game you remember and love, but it's also been brought up to date in its design aesthetics, so it's going to appeal to younger children as well, which is exactly what Hero Quest needs to do. It needs to appeal to younger people. It needs to get more young gamers into dungeons fighting goblins. I think this game will do that. I think this game will do that probably more than any other dungeon crawler on the market at the moment. I am delighted to see the return of Hero Quest. I have said since the very beginning that it is an amazing thing that it has come back. 
and I am very much looking forward to seeing what Hasbro have planned for expanding the game line going forward, above and beyond what they have already shown us and teased. But I think that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.